Hey guys, Kurt Haas here from Hostile Conditioning with the one and only Tom and Coop. And today we're going to be talking about some cool changes we're doing with our kettlebell program over here at Hostile Conditioning. Listen, we've been rocking the kettlebells now in Orleans for over two, two and a half years now. We've while. got lots of clients, we have lots of kettlebell athletes that train here. And uh, we've been looking at, you know, all the cool stuff we've done. And like anything else, we have to always keep improving our game, if you yeah. will. You know, keep the interest in training physically and mentally. So one of the things Tom and I have been working on is uh, what we're calling the new HKS, Hostile Kettlebell Systems. All right, maybe we'll do like HKS on the video. Maybe Tom can do that, explosions we'll and stuff like that. Thing. We'll see. But a six-week protocol. And, and basically what we're doing now is that we want to further the, the effort and the, and the training and, and the work ethic in our kettlebell program, especially for people that have been with us a long time and have acquired some good conditioning and some really good skills, we don't want you to get bored. I mean, the key to training is to keep the mind active and, and the hunger there. Yeah, you exactly. Will. You, you want to, it's, it's, it's nice and fine and dandy to throw people through a workout all the time, but we don't want to just put you through a workout and make you sweat and make you go through some discomfort. We actually want to have a plan and have a system in place so that you can actually measure your improvements and have a reason for making this and that exercise you know, there's a reason for the next three, four weeks, five weeks that you're doing this exercise is to balance, counterbalance, is to stabilize this, make this part stronger, etc. Absolutely. So it's just basically to make it more well-rounded. But also, like we were saying, is that a lot of athletes after a certain point with kettlebells have, you know, their main goal was, hey, I just want to learn 30 moves. I want to get to the point where I can survive an advanced exactly. class, right? And that's great. And once you achieve those goals, it's very important to have other goals within it as well. So with the new six-week program, what we're doing is basically Todd and I will establish uh, a challenge yeah. that we want to run through every six weeks. And then by having that, that challenge put together, then we know, okay, based on the moves we want to do, the sequences, what the overall goal of that challenge is, now we're going to be able to take the pro training for the next five weeks and make it all follow into that so that it works towards that overall with the client. So again, another reason, when they're coming in, they're training for something. So it's just like competing. I always tell people compete. And whatever you do, compete. Because the moment you, you put your line, your, that line in the sand, that date that you're competing on that day, your training goes up 10, 15%. Yeah, you intensity. have a goal consistency, you have a goal, you have something to work towards. So it's really cool to have that again in your training once you've achieved a certain level. And, and then we're going to do it in actually a pretty purposeful way overall. Once we've established what the, um, the challenge is going to be, the first week we're actually we're just going to, hey, this is what we're going to do. And here's, here's some of the skills we either have to learn exactly. or go over because it's been a while. You know, and at the same time, just let people see where they're at. We get to see where they're at with it as well too, right? The challenge what we're going to do is we're going to establish that baseline. Exactly. So they get to see how well they did, we get to see how well they, well they did, and then that allows us to focus on the next three or four weeks of training to get them ready in week three and week four, strengthen the weaknesses, focus on what was good, and just prepare them, cause that adaptation, make them stronger, fitter, tougher, exactly. specifically in the moves that are in the challenge overall. Yeah, and running the whole challenge through will, is good practice for them, but it's also a really good opportunity for us to find out what the weaknesses are. Where do we need to work feedback. on? It's, it's it feedback. really helps us fine tune the next few weeks. And it gives us a chance to, you know, and some people, you know, like anything else, uh, they'll, they'll feel that they're doing a move better than sometimes they are. So it's a chance for us to show them, hey, here's there's why you tweak. broke down. Here's a tweak. Here's something that's going to yeah. make it a little bit better for you, right? And then in the whole adaptation process, you know, once we change the routine and we're doing something specific, after about four or five weeks, you've done all the changing you're going to do on it. So we're going to use that week five as, the retest, challenge. the challenge. So this yeah. time it's like it's for real kids, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And now what's really cool is that if they finish the last challenge, and let's say it took them 27 minutes with a 16 kilo kettlebell. Well, what's really cool for them too mentally is that they know, hey, I know I can improve on that because I did it four weeks ago, right? I did it three yeah. weeks ago. So now going into that, they're gonna sit there and say, you know what, I wanna beat this by two or three minutes. Well, now chasing something always gets you a little bit further yeah, and quicker. Amazing. Exactly, then if you're just sitting there saying, let's see what we can do. So week two is let's see what we can do. Week five, let's improve, exactly. right? And, and again, it's really cool to see that and we'll see that, that competitiveness against themselves come out, which is really rewarding, right? And, and safe because it's not them worried about what the guy or girl beside them is doing. It's, hey, you know what? I did it in 27. Damn it, I'm gonna yeah. beat it by two minutes. I know I can do it. Exactly. And again, by working on the skill set of the specific moves, right? You know, right? Obviously when we work with people on, on a windmill or something very technical, you know, what do we try to do with them? Repeatedly, exactly. Right? And next time we do it, let's spend a little time more on it. Let's spend. So the skill set improves, but you're gonna execute at a better level overall. Right? And then when they know that week five is the big push, it's the big punch, 
you know what? We'll hear stuff where they slept better because they want to get ready for it. Yeah. They ate better because this, you know, if this Nervous workout business. really meant something to them. It's like a real competition, yeah. them against them. And then after that, we're going to use the week six as the deload, deload, yeah, the recovery and stuff. So stuff that we work on the deload would be. Well, we don't do some Turkish get-ups, maybe we need, maybe slow motion Turkish get-ups, and maybe do some windmills for lighter and hold the position a little longer, yeah. open up the hips, and to clean back. things up and stuff clean, like that. Yeah, it shakes sure. the backs a lot of people, sure. their back starts getting a little bit well, tender. Well, and especially on that day when they're pushing it, right, they've prepared, yeah. they've peaked, they've executed, while well, like any other sport, we need a week or two usually to deload, so basically decompress, clean out a lot of the junk yeah. and stuff, so the intensity of that week would be a 6 out of 10. Exactly. Really almost to the point where some of the people, we know a lot of people chomping at the bit, they're like, oh man, I really I want more, I want, I want more. more. But you know what, that week of deload is going to let the nervous system recover, it's going to get good blood flow, it's going to clean things up, and at the very least, if they're chomping at the bit for the week, well, imagine how they're going to hit the next week. Yeah. So back to week one, they're raring to go, physically and, and mentally. And they're going to have to trust their coaches. Because the people that come here, I just want a hard workout, I just want to get a good sweat going. They just need to trust us. That if they want to see improvements, they want to evolve, they need to trust us. You need to ramp it up and do the cycles, right? Absolutely. You so they always... need to trust the coaches and have yeah. that deload week. That's that right. doesn't mean that they're still working at 6 out of 10. It's still They're still going to be sweating, and I'll tell you, a 6 out of 10 after a high level exertion is still your body's going to be working and that's where they get a chance to see just how much that test took out of them is because they'll sit there and go like, geez i'm really sweating all even though i know i'm doing half the volume or half the intensity it's showing you that your body's gone into overtime Nervous and it needs, got that, taxed and it's it's it needs to cool yeah. down so so the, the whole cool thing about this again once again is that it's all about delivering more and more purpose to the workouts for our seasoned cattle, kettlebell people here, I almost said cattle, our seasoned kettlebell people here that keep it going. So, yeah. because what happens is you work so hard to get those certain levels, it's having that continual challenge, right? And then for us, challenge wise, we're gonna come up with all kinds of challenges. Yeah. It's not always gonna be. And these challenges are gonna complement each other. You know, if we work on something and we made a certain part of your, of your body, of your skills improve, we're not just gonna let that go completely right. and touch, touch it again three months from now, we're going to build up on it. We're going to do something that complements it or counters it yeah. to help you balance, right? So we're going to capitalize on the strength gains from challenge to challenge. And know? the whole thing is keeping the head busy. A new challenge, a new focus, exactly. you know, five more week reasons to come in, you know, uh, five more weeks of reasons to come in because of week, you know, the next testing is coming up again and you want to do well and stuff. And, and that's the cool part. And you'll see some people that will be nervous at first for a challenge. Yeah. And then all of a sudden when they start to see the improvement and the confidence and, and the self-esteem from that, they're going to look forward to the next one and attack the next one even more zeal Absolutely. and stuff like that. So I think it's really cool. I think it's something that's going to really keep our clients challenged and continually getting fitter and stronger. And just, you know, another great reason why, you know, you need to have something to follow and be coached with a really good system. So for you, the client, don't worry about it. Yeah. Just play, just come in, show up. We'll do the Show rest. up, we'll take care of the rest. You don't even need to know you're doing the challenge again. It's good to know, but everything we're going to do, we're taking care of you, we're doing it for a reason. That's all you really need to focus on. Excellent, guys. Six-week protocol. Awesome. Enjoy. Enjoy.